Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Happy Pi Day! Well, it, it's late in February when I'm recording this, and I'm getting real excited because Pi Day is only a couple of weeks away. I I wonder how many of you get Pi Day off from school. If you don't, go talk to your teachers, especially your math teacher, or go talk to your parents and tell them that March 14th should be a day off to allow you to act as rationally as possible. Now, if if this doesn't make sense to you, Give me about 10 minutes and I think it will. Pi Day will make more sense after you understand better rational versus irrational numbers, the multiplicative inverse or the reciprocal, and the signs of products, quotients, sums, or differences. Let's start by talking about rational numbers. What's a rational number? Is it a number that uses good judgment? No, no. The word rational number comes from the word ratio. A ratio represents, in a simple form, for every amount of one thing, how much there is of another thing. For instance, if you had a bowl containing five apples, and two of the apples are green, what's the ratio of green apples to total apples? Well, it's 2 to 5. Well, you know what a ratio is. An irrational number is a number that can be written as a ratio or as a fraction. For instance, 1 third. Well, that's a fraction, so it's a rational number. 1 third could be converted to a decimal, 0.33 repeating. And obviously that would be a rational number because it could be converted back to one-third. Minus six and a third is also a rational number. Negative numbers can be rational. Six and one-third is a mixed number that could be converted to an improper fraction. So minus six and a third is a rational number. 0.45 equals 45 over 100. 8 equals 8 over 1. Minus 45 equals minus 45 over 1. And the square root of 4? Well, that can be simplified to 2. And 2 could be written as 2 over 1. So the square root of 4 is a rational number. Well, what's an irrational number? Real simply, an irrational number is a number that can't be written as a ratio or a fraction. The square root of 2 can't be written as a ratio or a fraction. It's a uh, decimal. When you convert it to a decimal, it goes on forever. And it's not a repeating decimal. And pi. Pi is the most famous irrational number. Pi equals 3.14159, and that number goes on forever. And it's not a repeating decimal, it's just a string of numbers. It's a string of numbers that starts with 3.14. 3.14. Pi. 3.14. That's March 14th. That means that March 14th is Pi Day. And since Pi is an irrational number, we should all celebrate Pi Day by having an irrational day. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, we're supposed to figure out if these two numbers are either rational or irrational. The first one, 0.666 repeating. Well, that equals two-thirds, and two-thirds is a fraction. So 0 0.6 repeating is a rational number. How about 0.38697532? Yeah, 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 yeah. It keeps going on. 
it does go on forever, like point six 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 six, but it's not a recurring or repeating decimal like two thirds. So it's not a rational number, it's an irrational number. Do you know what a multiplicative inverse is? How about a reciprocal? Those are both big, cumbersome words. I don't like either of them. But we're forced to use them in math, and, and you might as well memorize it. And I like reciprocal better. I use reciprocal. And what does reciprocal mean? Well, reciprocal means to just flip the number over. If I add the number 3, that's really 3 over 1. And I f if I flipped it over, it would become 1 over 3. How about the number 3 over 8, 3 eighths? Well, if I flipped it over and got the reciprocal of 3 eighths, I'd have 8 thirds. Now, how is this helpful? Well, it's real helpful. Because to divide a number A by a non-zero number B, multiply A by the reciprocal of B. In other words, you can divide by flipping the second number and multiplying. Here's an example. What's 6 divided by 3? Well, you know that. That's easy. 6 divided by 3 is 2. But watch this. 6 divided by 3 equals 6 times the reciprocal of 3, or 1 third. And 6 times 1 third equals 6 over 3, and 6 over 3 equals 2. Now trust me, that property is going to pr prove to be very, very useful as we get further into algebra. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. Well, 4 divided by 1 fourth equals 4 times 4 over 1. And 4 times 4 over 1 equals 16 over 1, or 16. So if you divide a number by a fraction, you're going to get a number bigger than your original number. I know there's some of you out there that get your signs wrong when you're doing mathematical operations. You multiply a negative number times a positive number, and you're not really sure whether the answer should be positive or negative, and uh, it's very confusing. If you memorize a couple of rules, You'll never make any mistakes with your signs in, op in mathematical operations. So let's go over those rules. i got a matrix here, and I'm showing in this first column three potential results. The first result is that the answer to the mathematical operation is positive. The second row is the uh, answer is negative, and the third row is the answer is zero. Well, let's talk about addition first. When I'm adding, I'm going to get a positive number if the number with the larger absolute value is positive. I'm going to get a negative answer if the number with the larger absolute value is negative. And I'm going to get zero if A and B are additive inverses. Well, let's look at that. I've got 6 plus minus 3. Which number has a higher absolute value, 6 or minus 3? Well, the absolute value of 6 is 6. The absolute value of minus 3 is 3. So 6 has a higher absolute value, and 6 is the positive number. So when I add 6 and minus 3, because positive 6 has a higher absolute value, my answer is going to be positive. How about 6 plus minus 9? Well, minus 9 has a higher absolute value, so my answer is going to be negative. Another way to think about that is I've started on the number line at 6, and I'm going to move to the left towards the negative numbers by 9 spaces. 
The first six spaces will take me back to zero, and the next three spaces will push me into the negative numbers. So my answer is going to be negative. How about six plus negative six? Well, both six and negative six have the same absolute value, and negative six is the additive inverse of six, which just means that if I add the additive inverse to the original number, I end up with zero. All right, well, how about subtraction? What are the rules for subtraction? Well, this is pretty easy. If I'm subtracting B from A, and A is larger than B, I'm going to end up with a positive number. However, if A is smaller than B, I'll end up with a negative number. And if A equals B, I'll end up with zero. For instance, B, or 3, is a smaller number than 6, so when I subtract 3 from 6, I get a positive number. But if I subtract 8 from 6, I'm going to end up with a negative number, because 8 is a larger number than 6. And if I subtract 6 from 6, I'll get 0. How about multiplication? How about division? Well, multiplication and division are pretty much the same. You'll see the rules are exactly the same uh, for a positive answer and a negative answer. Um, the rules are a little bit different uh, to get a 0 because in the case of division, if B or my denominator um, is 0, then I've got an, uh, an undefined answer. It's not really a fraction, so I can't uh, consider that. But the other rules are the same between multiplication and division. If A and B have the same sign, if they're both positive or they're both negative, and I'm multiplying or dividing, my answer is going to be positive. If A and B have different signs, then I'm going to get a negative answer. And if A equals 0 or B equals 0, in the case of multiplication, then my answer is going to be 0. Let's look at some examples. If I've got minus 6 times minus 6, both numbers have uh, the same sign, negative, so my answer is going to be positive. How about negative 6 times, or negative 6 divided by positive 3? Well, my two numbers have different signs, so my answer is going to be negative. And how about 6 or minus 6 times 0? Well, minus 6 times 0 equals 0. Try to solve this puzzle. Hit your pause button, solve the puzzle, and then hit your forward key to move forward. Is math difficult? Well, let's find out. The answer to the first question was minus 6 times 6 equals minus 36. That's a negative number, so I put an N in that first uh, box. The second question was 0 divided by minus 3. Well, 0 divided by minus 3 equals 0, so I put a 0 or an O in the second box. The third question was minus 3 divided by minus 3. The signs of both of those numbers are the same, so my answer is going to be positive, and I put a P in that box. So, is math difficult? Nope. Well, that's our lesson on rational and irrational numbers. I hope you understand the difference now, and I hope you'll celebrate National Pi Day on March 14th. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info where you'll find worksheets and quizzes that will help determine if you really understand rational and irrational numbers. I hope you had a good time and I hope you're coming back again real soon.